Hi, I'm CP, you're on Bespo Unit, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Placencia Reserva Original. As per usual, this review was conducted using the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can use at home. Simply look in the description where you'll find a link which will take you to a guide so you'll learn how to use this and it will also provide you with PDFs of a blank version that you can download to use yourself. Uh, furthermore, these cigars have been stored for the last three weeks in the Bovedo Acrylic Humidor that you can see behind me. This ensures that they were properly acclimated and prepared for the review. They were stored with 69% Bovedo packs and I monitored them regularly with a Bovedo butler. So first of all, full disclosure, Paul and I are big fans of the Placencia Reserva Original. It is a wonderful smoke to have in the morning with your coffee, uh, when you're answering your first emails and getting started for the day. Therefore, we're very fortunate to have the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula to act as a safeguard to make, ensure that we are impartial and prevent bias. As you can see in my hand, I have the Robusto, which I'm currently finishing. This is four and three quarters by 52. Uh, it is assembled at the Placenta uh, factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, using an accordion bunching method. Here's an unsmoked one, which I'm going to use as an example. Uh, it is a Nicaraguan Puro, but you've probably already heard of this cigar because it is one of the only, if not the only, organic cigar on the market. Indeed, uh, the Jalapa and Esteli uh, Placencia fields are certified by the Organic Crop Improvement Association, or OSHA for short, and interestingly, these uh, tobaccos are grown using the traditional uh, Nica uh, Rao uh, native techniques that have existed for over 500 years. So diving into the look and feel, you'll first notice that this is a remarkably straight cigar with a very smooth and solid construction. There are no discernible soft spots and this cigar has a firm spring when pinched. It also has a distinctive nutmeg hue which is um, emphasized by the mottled and stretched vein texture which is quite refined overall and it has a very oily sheen. On the foot I have uh, listed a couple of aromas which include labdanum, which is quite musky, some uh, sweet caramel, as well as a touch of cinnamon spice. Meanwhile, the pre-light, uh, when you cut the cigar, uh, some people have mentioned that uh, it is quite a hard draw. However, for the cigars that I have uh, smoked for the review, I had not experienced any of these issues. In fact, they all had a very good smooth draw. Uh, the flavours aren't as strong as I expected though on the pre-light given how rich they are on the foot, but I experienced salted caramel. So the same caramel that I smelt earlier with the touch of salt, salt that just left a residue on the lips, as well as some cinnamon spice as before, and some gingerbread on this occasion too. A little bit yeasty, quite interesting indeed. Therefore, next we'll be talking about the palette, and as you can see, I'm on the final third of this cigar, which is a shame because I wanted to show the large band, and I did have a very impressive ash as well, but I got a little bit carried away with myself. The first third opens up with the same musky labdanum richness that you experience when you're smelling it off the foot. However, here it's paired with some fragrant rosewood, this lovely woody texture that goes very nicely with a malt creaminess that you get on the retrohale. As you transition into the second third, you start to notice an earthiness, which I would describe as charred patchouli. This herb has a very distinctive flavor, which I certainly detected here, if it had been burned ever so slightly. Another note that I particularly enjoyed in the second third was grape must. Grape must is the byproduct when you're producing wine. It's what's left over after pressing the juice. This is sometimes fermented to produce an udvi, such as grappa, and can also be used to produce something called rohatafia. It's quite venous, very fruit forward, has this distinctive raisin flavor, is a little bit boozy as well. This was quite distinctive, had a kind of balsamic flavor in the second third, and it paired quite nicely with some nutmeg spice that was revealed in the retrohale. And once you get into the final third, which is where I am now, you'll be greeted with this dominant terracotta note, which is reminiscent of musty earth and the soil of its native country. This flavour is rich in minerals and goes quite well with the pepper that is particularly present in the retrohale, as well as a long and lingering sandalwood finish. As you can probably gather, this is a very complex cigar and it features a rich 
smooth, velvety mouthfeel with a balanced palate stimulation that interacts with every part of the tongue. That being said, throughout the first and second third, it focuses more on the front, and it's not until the final third that we start to feel something at the back of the tongue. The uh, life cycle is quite developed. You get uh, a rich variety of characteristics and notes throughout each third, which evolve nicely, produce new and unique flavors. And finally, the finish is particularly lingering. It lays very nicely on the tongue, continues to pair with your beverage of choice, which we'll talk about later. And of course, the residual scent left in the room is pleasingly aromatic. It's not overbearing or inoffensive whatsoever. I quite enjoy it after enjoying the cigar. Next, we'll dive into the burn and combustion of this cigar. So as you can see here, I'm in the final third. I did touch it up only once in the first third, and it perhaps wasn't even necessary. Um, overall, it does produce a little bit of waviness with a razor-sharp burn, but you probably don't need to touch it up uh, out of all the cigars that I've had. And I've had three for the purpose of this review, but I've had quite a few more before that. Um, I only touch them up probably one out of five occasions. Meanwhile, the temperature can get quite hot, especially in the Robusto if you smoke it too fast. So therefore, I encourage you to smoke it slowly and give it the time that it deserves. And similarly, the ash backbone, I've produced some very nice ashes on this, perhaps a third of the cigar at the very least, which then eventually just prop, plop off naturally into your lap or into an ashtray, depending on how quick you are. Finally, we're going to talk about the overall experience of this cigar, and this is our last reviewed consideration. So firstly, getting the cigar that I sm haven't smoked yet, uh, we'll talk about the bands. As you can see, it has three bands. There's lots of ornamentation on the cigar uh, with a white and gold theme. I'm very fond of these bands, and uh, sometimes I wish that this one was a little bit smaller so I could uh, appreciate it for longer. Nevertheless, the first band, it does a good job of protecting the foot of the cigar from any damage. The second band gives you some very beautiful and ornate rustic ornamentation, and the final band will stay on, as you can see, when you're well down to the nub, so you can still have a little bit of ornamentation throughout the whole smoking experience. Meanwhile, the box, uh, I don't have one on me, but if you look in the written review in uh, the description below, you'll see a couple of pictures of the uh, box itself. It has a very rustic design with uh, leather strips around the band, around the edges, which has been nailed in place, and somewhat look like planks, and a branded finish with the distinctive P logo. If you open it up, uh, you have on the inside of the uh, box, you have uh, the same white uh, white paper with gold lettering telling you the story of this cigar. And of course, the value of the cigar, it provides you a lot of bang for your buck. You can pick these up as singles for just $7.90, which is excellent given the, given the experience that it provides and that it is a fully organic cigar. However, you can do even better, and Paul managed to pick up a couple of boxes uh, which came to uh, $5 each per cigar, which is excellent to say the least, especially given that uh, for the occasion we've given this four marks because it's a very versa versatile cigar that you can use just about anywhere, anytime. Indeed, it would look great at a formal occasion in a very well-to-do lounge, or you could enjoy it at a special occasion such as a wedding, especially given that it's a white band with a gold uh, text on it. It looks very luxurious, Yet, it is an affordable cigar, and indeed you could enjoy this as well with a couple of buddies at a barbecue, or even alone, for a moment of contemplation. And finally, we're going to touch on pairings, which is not a scored consideration, but we have this at the bottom right hand corner of every review. Firstly, in terms of food, now I often uh, talk about how I love having a cigar for a barbecue. Um, indeed, this is a great cigar that you could have with grilled steak, and I would suggest specifically a hanger steak, which is very tender and delicate and rich in flavor, which would go well with the characteristics of this cigar. Alternatively, you could go for some dark chocolate. I would suggest something by, for example, Argenco, which is an, a Nicaraguan artisanal brand that produces some very fine creations. And finally, you could instead go for a Danish pastry. I think this would be a particularly interesting combination because you have some of the yeastiness, such as the uh, gingerbread on the pre-light, you have the malt, but you also have some of the spices, such as nutmeg in the second third. As for beverages, I would go for an Armagnac rather than a Cognac, although Cognac is probably a uh, more common choice with a cigar. Armagnac is produced using a continuous 
uh, uh, column still, so it's distilled only once, whereas cognac is distilled twice. This means that Armagnac managed to retain a lot of that Venus uh, uh, fruit forward flavor, which would certainly pair, pair well with that note that you'll experience in the second third of this cigar. Alternatively, a vintage champagne would be a great choice as well, especially that you have some creamy malt in the first third and you do have that Venus characteristic in the second third. A vintage champagne tends to be a lot more mature and complex and would definitely be best suited to this cigar. Finally, uh, when it comes to coffee, as much as I love an espresso with my cigars, I would instead suggest a filter coffee. Not only is it going to be a longer experience, but it's going to have, be uh, more mineral rather than strong on the copper and thick roasted flavours. I've done my best to be as impartial as possible and I hope that you're satisfied with the results. Indeed, this is a fantastic versatile cigar that you can enjoy for a variety of occasions. It's also very beginner friendly and it's a great cigar to get started on. It's mild but not too mild and it has a variety of complex flavours. It will also satisfy even the most seasoned veteran of cigar enthusiasts. That's all from me today, I hope you've enjoyed this review, and until the next time, head to bespokeunit.com, check out all the other men's lifestyle content that we have, and don't forget to subscribe for more like this in the future. Until next time, take care.